And then the last phase is saying everything opens up your body. Like your just everything opens up and your organs comes out because nothing can hold it together. Just phase and you just all casually say, Oh now he's in the phase two. When you're dead, you're not a human. You just you are just empty beyond anything. You're just empty. When people die from starvation, they go through many phases. They don't, you just don't die. It's just like, oh, I'm starving, I'm gonna die, you know? There's a phase of hallucination. There's a phase of crazy. They just lost their mind. They started laughing, you know? It's just, just like laugh. They don't recognize their sons. They're not taking like their mothers. They just, like, just lost everything. And then, the last phase is saying everything opens up your body. Like your just everything opens up. And your organs come out because nothing can hold it together. And then just you make this sounds that like some ghost would make. And but till that moment you still beg for food. And these are the sounds you hear every day. But when you live in the country, you don't feel anything for that because it's every day, you know, every corner there's children who does that, a father who does that, and your family who does that. So this is like daily life, but at school we still have to sing songs like we have nothing to envy because we live in the best country. Oh man, you've seen a lot of that, haven't you? Yeah, it's a, it's just face, and you just all casually say, oh, now he's in the phase two. Okay, you are still far away, you're just still in the phase one. You know, like, we, we've seen the phase of a lot of death from starvation, but like, you just, just can't tell. And it's, it's not like we say it out of any sympathy, it's just, you become just numb, you know. Do you, did you ever reach any of those phases? I think for me, among all these things, there are a few things that I remember was about the young boy or man's, all the organs just come out of his back and the dog was just waiting for him to die and eat his organ, right? And all the flies all over him. But he was still making this noise. And I was wondering, how can he make any sounds? And the last person I remember seeing was right before my escape was a, in the hospital. There's like piles of human bodies and the hospital just like put them there and there's a bathroom right next to it. I had to go through that to go to the bathroom every day. And there's on top of all these human bodies, there's a woman was laying there in some flower pattern pants. But when you're dead, you're not a human. You just, you're just empty beyond anything, you know, just empty. But she looked way more empty because her eyes was out. Her mouth was open because the rats ate her eyes first. And I was just looking at that as like, you know, it's like, what it means to be even, even human? It just means nothing. It, I think somehow that scene keeps coming back to my dream. Maybe that's the last thing I saw in North Korea. Maybe that's why I cannot forget. But it's a, yeah, there's a lot of those. Say, so the human life means nothing there. What's the family? I'll get to that in a minute. So as far as controlling the people, we have starvation, propaganda, punishment, which is the prisons, controlling emotions, <laughs> executions. Have we missed anything? Uh, Any strategies to control the people? As I said about making people criticize each other. So it's like a making people distrust each other, breaking the, tr the tr bond of trust between your family, between your children. So first thing that they read, the regime did, they got rid of the word love or romance, that we cannot live for love. We have to live for the revolution of party. So the parents cannot tell their children that they love their children. We don't tell our parents that we love them. Spouses don't tell each other they love each other. It's not a concept. We don't have the word for a friend. I call my 
classmate, comrade. Comradeship and friendship is a very different thing. Because when you're a comrade, you fight for the revolution. You're not being a f- two individual friends. Mm-hmm. And then even at nine years old, every Saturday, if you're an artist or somebody adult, you have to do it every two days. We have to come, entire class come together, and then we have to repent our sin for that week. Say, you know, I was not better revolutionary. I was being selfish. I was being individualistic. I did not fight better, and I will do better. Thank you, you know, dear leader, for forgiving me for my sin. And at the end, we have to do something called criticizing another person. This is a must. You cannot skip that part. So every class mates have to stand up and denounce somebody for their fault. Imagine you do that every week to human psychology. Mm-hmm. Then you have to watch out for everybody because you don't know who's going to criticize you at the end of Saturday. And if that criticism is bad, then your family get punished together with you. It's a life, life and death situation. So that makes sure that you're never going to trust anybody. And of course, you cannot start a revolution if you don't trust anybody. And then also, you completely isolated. And it, that's how you watch out even, you know, mice and birds and afraid. Nobody knows who's going to watch you. And it happens with your parents. There are many cases that children will report on their parents. Really? Because um, the regime promises that's how you become a good revolutionary. But not only that, sometimes they tell children, I'm going to give you food. If you report on anybody who's betraying our party, I'm going to give you food. So some children are so starving. They, they go tell the authority, like, I heard my mom was saying this. And then the mom get executed. How many people do you think get executed a year there? It's... Nobody knows because now that the North Korean regime knows that we can watch it from satellites and there's a lot of execution videos from satellite footage, so they do on inside the stadiums. So that's the height. But at least there are several hundred thousand of them in the concentration camps that the UN calculated based on those camp numbers and they can see even human body I- images now and bury sites. So these are all visible now with those satellites. What is a, what is something that you're talking about at, at, at school, they would force you to denounce a, a, a comrade. Mm-hmm. What, is, what is an example of something you would denounce somebody for or criticize somebody for? It can be anything. You said you can be, oh, that person, uh, you know, sad that maybe the, what you know the school material was not good or maybe like silly you know because there are so many propaganda materials Mm -hmm. or oh he i went to his house one day i saw his parents were watching foreign tv tv or i heard him one day that he was singing some foreign song or i saw him someday in a wrong outfit like it can be anything so is is everybody punished when, if you denounce somebody, are they... Their family get punished along with that person. So everybody gets punished yeah. all the time. Yeah. So you have to be paranoid. You have to be, you have to be so paranoid. So what if somebody didn't see anything? Do you have to make something up? You have to see something. That's a thing. So that's why entire week... You watch your behavior, but you have to find the fault in others because you are forced to denounce. And I mean, imagine if you just lied. I mean, that person is going to say it's a lie, right? So you have to find something all the time. Who does wrong? Have you been denounced? I have to be. I had to be. Everybody had to be denounced, and everybody had to be a... So things that I was denounced, it was like I was so little. So they give you quotas. Like if we work in the farm, we have to sit in, right? And they say in one hour, you have to finish this much. So if one person fails to, to finish their quota on time, the teachers would beat entire children in the class because it's something called the collective guilt. They teach you that you're not an individual. 
they, the first thing North Korea does to you is that you are not an individual. We don't have the word I. What matters is we, the collective. So if one person does wrong, it's not that person's fault. It's your fault, all of you. So that's how it's all about the collective guilt because you are not one single unit ever. And so I was, there were times that I couldn't finish the, all my quota on time. Then, of course, that was the subject of criticism. What was the punishment? Beating. Beating? And then uh, make us to run and crawl on our school ground as much as we can in intermediate night and give us extra work until like 2 a.m. in the morning. So a lot of beatings, a lot of punishing. How would they beat you? Anything, because there is no human rights. So teachers, some of them are even sometimes come, like dr drunk. They get, they are so starving, right? So they have this anger. Then they are some psychopath, like literally bring these leather belts or like metals. And there's very common, they break your bones and take your eyesight away. Like they throw anything. They have this metal, uh, like where you put those cigarettes in. They can, yeah, asterisk, they can throw that at you, rocks at you. They can, they can kill you, and there's no accountability on anybody. So it's a, they do that children, like constant beating, everyday beating. And that's the thing, they think somehow you need to train your children and your wife through beating. That's the same. So yeah. if you want to train children and women, you have to beat them. When, what age does this start, the denouncing? As soon as around eight. Eight years old. Yeah. It starts around eight. And uh, beating starts as soon as one or two, even three months old. Because they never learn how to respect life. Yeah. So just throwing just literally an fin infant away. Like when North Korean women get, I mean, we are going to go back later, but they get raped in North Korea and back, they, they kill the baby. Right, so it's killing a baby is not a big deal there. It's not. No, killing a life is not, doesn't mean anything in the society. Hey everybody, I'm Sean Ryan. Click here to subscribe to the Sean Ryan Show YouTube channel for the hottest and most compelling interviews that you will not see anywhere else. I've also made a playlist of all the previous SRS episodes so they're easy to find. You can find that right here.